Good evening, grandchildren. It is currently Sunday at 10.38 on uh, November 22nd, and uh, I wanted to share with you guys my first screw-up at the news station, because that's exciting. So my job is to make promotional material for the news station. Usually promotion material is videos that go on the actual TV station and go flying through the air to satellites and back down. Sometimes to make posters and other things that they need to advertise for stuff, but it's usually video stuff that's gonna go on TV. And from the very beginning, I think I made that clear that I was terrified of that, that everything I did was gonna go on TV because I don't know what I'm doing and I'm just pretending like I know what I'm doing. And uh, everything that I make is just gonna go, if it's just gonna go directly onto the TV, um, what if I screw up, which is inevitably gonna happen? Well, it happened. Um, so, so we have these things called GTFR spots. The news station has two kind of slogans or taglines that I, we have to try to incorporate into every single promotional thing. Uh, those two things are GTFR, which is get the facts right, and SWF, which is severe weather first. The idea is that we're supposed to be, uh, selling those as the reason why you should watch our news station rather than any of the competitors, because we get the facts right and we don't give you wrong information, and if we do give wrong information, we fix it, but we don't give wrong information, so it doesn't even matter. Also, severe weather first, we're gonna be the first ones to give you the information about the things that could negatively affect you and your family, whether that's like weather stuff like storms or fires that could burn down your house and kill you and everybody that you love. So that's what I do. I tell people that they're not gonna die because we got your back. So I was making a GTFR spot uh, that was gonna go on TV. Uh, I, I wrote up a script and it was pretty much kind of like this interviewee thing where I got the, the news anchors and they all like sat down in this chair and I wanted it to seem like it was more of an interview than them talking, but it was it was a standard interview. There was nothing special about it. Uh, I filmed it and I got it to the point where I thought it was looking good enough. I mean, nothing is ever going to be perfect because I have a, a time limit and I can't uh, redo anything. And in general, I don't have time to make everything perfect. I have a I have a schedule that I have to follow, and I, I made it look as good as it was going to look. And it was sounding good, and I was I was happy with it. It was good enough to go on TV, I thought. And I showed my boss, and he looked at it, and he said, yeah, it's good. And then uh, one of the news anchors, Jennifer Scarborough, she looked at it, and was like, yeah, yeah, that's good. And uh, that was it. That was, that was the approval. So I wrote down a little piece of paper, the, the, the code names that I have to put in the system. It's this whole conversion thing. It doesn't matter. Anyway, I sent it back to Magic Control so they could put it on the TV, and then they put it on TV, and I thought I was good. Nope. Uh, I got into work uh, like two or three days later, and when I got into work, my boss came up to me and he uh, stood by my desk and he said, Austin, there's been a lot of complaints, a lot of people called in, and apparently there's something wrong with the sound in the video. And I looked at him and I said, what? We listened to it. It sounded fine. And he said, no, it's not fine. I didn't even know that people did this, but apparently the people at, who were sitting at home saw the commercial and it didn't sound good to them, so they literally called in to complain. Like, I've worked in the service industry for a year and a half at the movie theater, and I, I, I get that people people will complain about ridiculous things that they should not complain about, but when you're sitting at home on the TV and there's a 15 second commercial that doesn't look or sound right, you need to call in and tell somebody that it sounds terrible and that they should fix it so you don't have to sit through a terrible commercial. Whoever you are, a strange watcher of the news station, half of the commercials are terrible. There's no reason why you should complain about them being terrible, that's a given. Most of the local, most of the commercials that people make for local TV are terrible. Anyway, we got a ton of complaints from people at the news station and outside of the news station and that was my job to figure out what the problem was and fix it because it sounded perfectly fine on the computer and in my headphones and on another computer but apparently when it goes into the TV or if you watch it on your phone it sounds terrible and you can't hear any of the voices and it was this really really confusing problem and I don't know I, what do you do in that situation where nothing seems wrong but apparently something is very definitely wrong and you can't see what the problem is so I spent like four or five hours trying to figure out what the problem was and trying to fix it and trying to mess around with all the settings and getting it sound good uh, and Every time I would get it to the point where I thought it was fixed, I would send it to my phone and then my phone would play it and it would sound terrible again. And eventually I'd hook up this thing where my computer forwarded all of the audio from the, the computer to my phone through the internet and I was just editing to my phone and no matter what I did, it always sounded terrible and I didn't understand why because when I played it on my speakers or my headphones, it sounded perfect, but when it's on my phone, it didn't sound right at all and nothing made sense. So I decided to put my problem on the internet on some sound engineer forums that I found and then go on a lunch break. I got back and nobody at that point really knew what was happening and uh, I didn't get any clear answers from anybody on the internet so I 
Uh, I told my boss that I've been working on it for a really long time and I couldn't figure it out. I thought I got it sounding pretty good, but it still wasn't great. And then he took it and he tried to fix it and that still didn't work. But we put a kind of newer version on TV that didn't sound as bad. But still, when you watch it on the TV, all this um just disappeared and, and it, you, yeah, the music was like way too loud and it just everything was crazy. But, but at this point, he's the one that fixed it last, and he put the new version on the TV, so it's not my problem anymore. A couple of nights later, I got an email that said somebody responded to my question on the forum for the sound engineers, and uh, they had this in-depth analysis of my sound files and revealed that apparently the phasing was inverted on one of the channels. Now, before a week ago, if you told me that one of the channels of audio on my video had a phase inversion, I would have told you thank you. Because that doesn't make any sense, but it sounds cool, and I probably did something good. We'll let this be a lesson to you, grandchildren. Not, none of that, none of those words are good. So I, so I ended up doing a lot of research and learning a hell of a lot more about sound than I ever knew before. Uh, apparently, so, with, so the way that sound works is all that sound is, is like we're surrounded by air. And even though you can move around in it, there's actually these little tiny particles that are floating all around us and they go in our bodies and that's how we breathe because there's oxygen and blah, 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 blah. We have air. Anyway, um, when, when a sound is made, it's just something shaking the air in a, in a certain pattern. So when I'm talking, my vocal cords are just vibrating and then the air is just shaking as it goes through my throat and then out my mouth and my mouth is kind of modifying the way that it's shaking a little bit and it's just sending out little vibrations. It's like on a string or a cord or something. If you shake it, it travels through the cord down to the bottom, just whatever you do, my, my vibration is going through the cord. That's all that sound is, it's just the air shaking because you shook it with your, with your body. Me talking is just me shaking the air with my body. That's it. Shaking the air with your body sounds like a really awesome dance that I'm not gonna demonstrate for you guys. But I can imagine in my head and it's great. Anyway, so when, I, so when there's a sound, it's sending out this wave that's just uh, going up and down and it's, the vibration is coming and going. That's what the sound is. It's just this wave that's going like that. And if you have two waves at the same time, they have like additive effects where, you, where if they're both shaking, then they compound and grow. And that's uh, why if you have a lot of sounds at the same time, it gets really loud, like a bunch of people in a stadium screaming. It just because it makes this really huge sound because it just increases in the volume the more of the same thing that's happening. That's where phase comes in. The phase is the actual like wave. If you have two waves happening at the same time, if they're in phase, they're moving together. When something is out of phase, that could mean that it shifted. So one is like this, and then one is like behind. But because one phase is like a little bit behind, the, the peaks are like kind of at different spots in the troughs, so like the valleys are at like also different spots. So it has these weird effects where, um, where if there's like a peak right where there's a valley, they'll combine to nothing, if that makes sense. I don't know if I'm making any sense right now. But with the wave, uh, if there's two of them at the same time, if you have one that's like one, one wave that's full and the other one that's like empty at that moment in time, then they cancel out. That's how sound canceling headphones apparently work. They, they, uh, they send the opposite of the wave that's coming. So if something's out of phase, it could be shifted off to the side so that you get uh, like occasional temporary cancellation of the sound. Or you can also have like a perfect inversion on one of the channels or one of the, the waves that's being sent out where it's actually completely opposite. And I don't know how this happened, but apparently at some point when I was filming and I, haven't, I didn't do anything intentionally that would have done this. And not all of the audio tracks had this problem, but some of the audio tracks that I was messing with had a phase inversion on the right audio channel, which means that the left channel was sending out this, this one thing and the right channel was sending the exact opposite thing. That's, that's hard to do with your fingers. It's like where, where they're completely mirroring each other, but because they're mirroring each other, when this one goes up and this one's going down, they perfectly cancel out. And it doesn't, well, it doesn't perfectly cancel out. There's enough stuff happening in the audio that you hear little bits of the voice. And in your ear, each channel sounded pretty good on its own. And I guess with my speakers, because they were hitting my ears before they could actually hit each other and cancel out, it still sounded kind of good on those speakers. But apparently when you have mono sound or you have the speakers right next to each other, like on my phone, they hit each other and turn into mono sound. So there's only, they, they mesh the waves mesh together and they cancel out. So again, I don't know how this happened. I don't know how one of the channels was inverted, 
but if you actually look at the the waveforms they perfectly are inverted so i had to go in and do this thing where i uh, i just copy the left channel over to the right channel on the uh, on the vocal parts and uh, it fixed it so they're both the same and then uh, i put the music back in and uh pretty much like magic it sounded good again and uh today I put a new version of that commercial on TV and now it should sound good on the TV and everyone should stop freaking complaining. So I guess in the end I had this problem and it was on air and the public saw my problem for a week and complained about it and today I fixed it. I guess you, I don't know if you call it a screw up because I didn't know it, ha it happened and none of my bosses knew it happened until it was too late uh, and I don't even know how it happened. But that was my first screw up at the news station. Uh, I guess on the plus side, I learned a lot about sound and the way that things work. And I also learned how to fix audio problems that I didn't know existed. And that's an important thing, grandchildren. It's not always about being correct and perfect all the time. It's about messing up a lot. And when you mess up, figuring out how to fix it and remembering not to mess up like that again. And I'm not going to mess up like that again because it was entirely unpleasant. Oh, another thing that happened recently, and I'm just going to add this in really quick. I'm not going to give you any detail really just because it's more fun that way. But apparently I was going to go watch the movie Mockingjay, which is a part two of the, like the, the Hunger Games, uh, whoop. It's like the last movie in the series, Mockingjay Part 2. Anyway, I was gonna go, I was gonna go to the movie theater and watch it, and I had to stop at Walmart to pick something up really quick, and on the way, uh, on the way into the store, there was this woman that was walking to everybody and asking if anyone could give her a ride. And she looked kinda homelessy. Uh, I don't think she was homeless, but she kinda looked like it. She was a little bit sketchy, and my first instinct is, no, I'm not gonna give you a ride. I have a movie to go watch, and you look like you might stab me. I told her no, and as I was walking away, I heard her telling somebody about something uh, uh, related to her having like a, a miscarriage or something and she needed to go to the hospital. Uh, anyway, I walked in the store, got the thing I wanted and on the way out of the store, I started feeling really, really guilty about telling this woman no because she needed a ride to the hospital or whatever. So when I came back out of the, out of Walmart, I, uh, I saw her sitting, uh, like on the opposite side of the, the building over like where there weren't any, any cars. I, I, th I couldn't find her at first. I ended up driving around the parking lot and then I found her and I told her that I could give her a ride and she needed to go to Red Bluff, which is like half an hour or 40 minutes away or something. I don't know. Uh, she wanted to go to the hospital in Red Bluff. Uh, so I, I, I told her that I could take her and I invited this woman that looked rather sketchy that I've never met before in my life into my car and I missed a movie driving her to the hospital. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, the entire time I was terrified of being stabbed or something, I felt like it was all gonna be like some kind of trick to, to steal my car or my money or something. But it turned out fine and that's a lesson that you should learn from this really quick story is that uh, people need help sometimes and you shouldn't, you shouldn't not help somebody because you're worried about it being a trick because I think most of the time people in this world are good and they don't have bad intentions and sometimes it's people who have bad intentions that ruin it for everybody else but I think most of the time we should be trusting as people and it does more good for the world. I don't know if any of that made sense right then. I'm really, really tired. All, I, pretty much all I'm telling you is that if a, a, a homelessy person asks you for a ride somewhere, just say yes. What's the worst that can happen? And on that note, uh, grandchildren, if you see me any time in the near future, mm, mm, every time I have to think of one of these, uh, I don't, I, I should start thinking of these ahead of time because I, I, I'm just kind of winging it every single time. I'm winging it every time I make any of these videos, actually. I never think of a topic even until right before I'm about to do it. I just turn on my camera and I'm like, okay, I guess I'm talking about this and then I start recording and then I see how it goes and it's not a good system, but I'm going to keep doing it because that's what I promised you. Anyway, if you guys see me anytime in the near future, uh, we, we should eat just, we should just eat cereal, cause cereal's nice. We should just have a bowl of like, Apple Jacks or, 
or Lucky Charms. Actually, you know what? I don't like either of those, like the regular version. We should get like the store version, if that's still a thing. Like don't get the name brand, because those those taste weird and they're like a hard and crunchier. But if you get the store brand, like the sketchy the sketchy kind, uh, it it's a lot better and it's more enjoyable. Just we should just both have like a or I don't know how many grandchildren are watching this. If there's only one, then we should both. But if there's multiple, then I guess let's have a giant cereal eating party where we all just kind of sit in the living room where we can't have any any sound at all no tv no radio nothing we're just all gonna sit in and cross our legs and sit in a circle and silently eat cereal together and the first person to laugh loses but i mean are you really losing you get cereal and that's a win in my book see you guys next week <laughs>